are the Farm Chicks. I'm Debbie Bissoon and this is my sister, Becky Bissoon. And we are taking you through the hills and valleys of Jamaica. In search of the most diverse and dynamic farms and their farmers. We'll show you the lush offerings of our island from livestock, grown produce, apple farms and even the meta farm. Let's just say the latest technology in farming. If we eat it, we'll show it. Let's get farming. It's another week of Farm Chicks, guys, and we are in our home parish of Clarendon. We are in a community called Sutton's, and if you know about Sutton's, you know it's near to Chapleton, right? And I'm super excited about this because Chapleton is where my alma mater, Clarendon College, the only CC. There's no other CC but this CC, right? It's the Clarendon College, the best high school in the whole of Jamaica. I can't even say the Caribbean. Don't at me, don't DM me, don't contest me, okay? Clarendon College to the world, there's no other CC that exists, okay? Period. Yeah. So how was your experience in going back to, to your alma mater? It was very nice, I felt very emotional. I was a little teary-eyed, you know, thinking about all the journeys I took to and from school for all of seven years. But I want to say big up to all the students of Clarendon College who are going there right now and are doing exceptional work. I ran into my agricultural science teacher, so that was pretty awesome. You know what I mean? And he was very nice about it. And we had a little moment and tell everybody, say, I'm the best student in my world. Everything. Such. She's at part of everything. Everything. I mean. Drama, everything. Everything, <laughs> everything made up. We went to Sutton's and we went to Miss Anita McCollum's farm. I am Anita McCollum and we're in Sutton's on my farm, Sorrel Farm, Sutton's district, across the river near the Sunny, here in Clarendon. Fantastic space, all of 10 acres. It was mind-blowingly huge. And what was interesting about this particular episode is that we had to cross a river, an actual river, like live river, to go over there. And when I timed them, we think so we couldn't cross it. You understand? But we made it. We made it. We made it. Yeah, and Miss McCallum, she understand the river, so she could cross it. And because she understand it, we could cross it too. We yeah. all crossed it. But her farm was humongous, 10 acres of awesomeness. Oh my God, there was so much there to take in. She had on the farm. Sorrel, sweet potatoes, she had corns, she had melons, mm -hmm. all that fancy jazz. And she's actually planning on having more crops on the farm as well. Yeah. So that's something for us to look forward to going back to visit. Yeah, you, you want to go back to visit the farm? Because I want to cross the river again. It wasn't that bad. Okay. It wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't that bad because big up to Volkswagen. Volkswagen, of course, our partners made sure that we were equipped and ready enough, safe enough in that Amarok to kind of zoops over the river. You understand? Because when we talk about the king of the hill and also the king of the roads and king of the off roads, we're talking about an Amarok, okay? We cannot go wrong with an Amarok. It did the job of getting us across the river onto Miss McCallum's farm, right? So she had sorrel for us, which was kind of crazy because we were like, sorrel at this time of the year, we're going to summer, you know? Summer, we are going to always have sorrel. Oh, we have summer sorrel. May not understand that. She called it bashment sorrel. Yes. Fancy sorrel, my love. Yes, bashment. Yes. Miss Anne! Hi, welcome. How are you? I'm okay. We reach after crossing the hills and the valleys too and the river. Hi, Miss Anne. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the journey coming. Yeah, we, we, we really did enjoy the journey. This is my sister Becky. How are you? Hi. Thank you so much for having us. You're welcome. This is a beautiful property. It looks massive. How many acres are we looking at right now? Ten acres. Ten wow. acres. Yes. Wow. Incredible. And it's so open. I realize it's between like two hillsides, so that means that a little valley, a little a valley business happening yeah, here. Yeah, we're in so. a little valley, but I'm still on the grid. Wow. I've been farming over here almost two years now, and I love farming. It's all about the nature and all about self-production, all about producing for others. Yeah. So tell us about the farm, you know, like what do you do here? I've seen corn, I've seen sorrel. What, 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 what do you do here? A lot of soil production and we have some sweet pota potato over there as well in the current. Yeah. But we mostly do the soil production. Right. Right around the air. I plant like every two months, sorry. Wow. Every two months? Like every two months. So it's not just December alone you plant no. soil? I have soil that's 
flowering stage, reaping stage, growing stage, and sorry that it don't bust as yet. In Sutton's where we farm, the river is unique because we have con continual water flowing where we can pump the water and irrigate the farm with the water to just pump water and flood the land. Flood the land? Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it like, wait, explain we, what you mean by you flood the land? We run the hose through the farm, drop it in a certain area, flood it and then I move it again and flood again. Okay, so, you, so, so, so the soil don't require like constant watering or? No. Okay. No. How often do you water the soil? Um, like, once a week, so much, like how we get a lot of rainfall the other day, I don't want to it now about three weeks now. Wow. So tell me what stage of sorrel do we have here now? The flowering stage. We have the flowering stage that is still the growing stage. And you mean flowering because they have a nice little pink Yes, and it is there. producing sorrel. Mm -hmm. So it is the flowering stage, so in a three weeks time we have ready sorrel. Nice. And I can see a little some holes in the leaves. Are they? They're, these are caused from mites, worms. Oh. So we normally use spray. So that those are one of the pests that affect. Yeah. Oh. We normally use carrot shocks to spray it and get rid of the worms and the insects, and also put a little twenty twenty in it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's mulch, but there's a kind of healingness that happened here. So with some like some dry or burnt bush underneath. What's happening Aye. here? The burnt bush yeah. is where after the tractor plow it, not even plow it, we harrow it the land. Yeah. And then the cow come what in. What arrow mean? What arrow mean? Arrow. arrow sound big word. Arrow is in, is an next plowing. Okay, so it yeah. plows it twice? No, the arrow chop it more finer than the plowing. Ah. There's two different equipment that the tractor use. So it come from seeds or you get sucklings? How it go? No, seeds. We okay. don't, do the sucklings, we don't know the seedling. Yeah. Because that will take a lot of time and a lot of energy, so it does drop. Sometimes we wait on the rainfall for it to germinate, sometimes we flood the land and they germinate. Okay, okay. And you don't count the amount of seed that no. goes into one hole, right? Yeah, but we don't put too much. You just throw seed. Yeah. You don't <laughs> put too much that it overcrowd it. So you just drop a little there and keep the dirt over it. Keep the dirt over it and it's good to go? Yes, keep the dirt over the seed and yes. it's good to go. No, but it's nice though. So Miss Anne, let me, let me ask you something now. So after me plant the seed now, how long does it take from the seed stage to here? So we're, we're, we're at a nice little seed because it's right. a sorrel account. Right now, yeah. this is um, almost two months old, but if we did uh, flood it with water con continually, yeah. it would be harder. So, but we don't flood it with a lot of water and we get a lot of rainfall in April. Okay. So the water, the amount of water that the soil gets determines the production of yeah. the soil. Are you a farmer in your community? Farm Chicks is looking for you. Become a Farm Chicks ambassador by sending an email to officialfarmchicks at gmail.com. Welcome back to Farm Chicks. We'll find a slot that look like it did already plow it up already. So the cold and they come through here, Sato? No, the cold and don't come through here, so but we have some bank in here that we planted pepper before. Okay. So the tractor come and iron it last week. Mm -hmm. So the cold didn't come here as yet to prepare to roll yes. for okay. us to plant. But I can demonstrate. But we're going to plant it. To show you. Right, all right, no problem. So we notice that the ground is a little bit dryish. Is it still moist the same way? I mean, underneath it? Yeah. Underneath it is cool sometimes. But like how it is disturbed by the tractor is not that moist. Oh, okay, I get you, I get you, I get you. So what kind of soil condition would you say this is? Um, clay, sandy clay mm -hmm. is not that loamy. Uh, oh. Okay, okay. So soil actually grows best in that kind of condition? Yeah. Where the water can actually go through the soil itself? But still retain some amount yeah, of water. Yeah, still retain amount of water underneath. Sometimes the top will dry, but the, the, underneath but it is moist. Nice. Moist, love that. 
All right, so we have the sorrel seed, and I never see sorrel. You know what made it think that you sorrel? Soccer. Not only the soccer. You the know the you, yes, you know the big the big part of the the, the sorrel that you, after you take off the petals, you see this big thing in the middle. Yes, it, it, the seed come from that. Oh, so we dry then. it. Okay. We sun them, dry them, shake them off. Get a piece of board and shake them off on the zinc. And after that, we take out the trash and the seed remain on the zinc. So out, out of one, out of one, what would, what would you call it, a pod? Out of one pod, sometimes you get like all 10 seeds. Out and of the one circle or something? more, yeah. So you need, you need the seeds to be dried to this level for it to work? Yes. Okay. Now you find a hole? Right here. Right, so you have the little oh, opening. Hold your foot, drop it there. Just ah, drop it so far, yeah. sir? You sure, Mr. Yes. Uh, any amount? Yeah, and cover it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're yes! watering. So you water the area. But the soil looks so nice when you wet up. Yes, it's very moist. All right, use your foot and clear the opening. Knock out some people's area. Look at God. All right, and you just do that. Don't cover it too deep. You don't cover it too deep. No. Why? Because sometimes most of them don't germinate when they cover too deep. Oh, they did the air as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then know how long now from. Us planting it? Well, moisture area? Yeah. Five days to germinate. To say has to start so the, 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 yeah. the little leaves start coming yeah. up? Wow. Well, moisture area. Mister, let's start with all two man. Jesus. Yeah, Hold on. Mister, I saw much sorrel reaper already, Mister. Yeah. I want to leave sorrel this. So you're basically picking from a plant that is now mature, right? Yes, it's a mature plant. It's big. So we have to more than one tree give you a bucket, you know, so you have to walk the road to get a bucket sometime. Sometimes when it is flush, you get a bucket before you reach anywhere. Okay. So what am I looking for now? So I would have planted my soil with my seeds. I have them there in the middle stages and looking for the pest that will come and just, you know, bore the whole of them kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, sometimes eh? the pest eat out the middle so, you know, so the tree don't extend or further. So oh. that's the main reason to spray it for it to get to extend. Okay, okay. So what would I now be looking for when I'm looking for a material size? We're looking, we have more than one different size on the tree. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for the more mature one. Sometimes the one that is hard to break up is the more mature one like this one. Okay. The one is not mature, mature break very easily. Oh. This is our mature one. It's not easily break, so you cut it from the tree. This one is not that mature, so you can break it from the tree. So we do normally do the most mature one and leave the one that is not well mature to reap another week. Okay. Fun facts about sorrel. Some persons have used sorrel to dye their clothing. Oh, that worked though. Like we white, white clothing, it stained, so people would boil it, and the water that they use. Oh, they so you take it, turn it pink. Submerge your clothes in it, and it dyes it because it it stains. Oh, mm -hmm. so everything turns pink. Yeah, or red, depending on how much sorrel you have in the water. I know that. Also, it is alleged that sorrel assists with your eyesight. You see the one year now, this one had me a little way because in my mind, for them with a sorrel I've been drinking from a young child, I should not be suffering from astigmatism because like, I suppose I have 20 20 vision. Like I said, it's a leg, so it's not, <laughs> it's not a hundred percent guaranteed, don't quote us on it. Yes, please. A leg. Speak to your doctors about these facts, please. <laughs> Plus guys, the most fun factors of all fun facts is that Jamaicans love sorrel at December time, we love draw sorrel. Even though we do consume it all year round based on the Bashman sorrel. Yes. Because I've seen sorrel even more frequent now in the, in the markets and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. so we produce a lot of farm, a sorrel on the farm to sell locally for now. In the future, I need to go internationally. I remember first time when you're picking sorrel, you have some little juki juki something on them. You know what I mean? It was the old time sorrel. Oh, this so one they call it bashment. <laughs> so this is a sorrel that now named bashment sorrel? Yeah, it's three months crab. It's a catch crab. Oh, so what was the first time sorrel? And never bashment the one day? Yeah, it's called the old time sorrel or Manchester black. Manchester, Manchester black. black. Was there a difference in taste between the bashment sorrel and the Manchester black? Not sure. Okay. The sorrels are healthy when they are crunchy on the plant. Sometimes the unhealthy start to spoil here. Okay. Yeah. 
Persons who feel like sorry only coming in December time is not anymore. This is not the old time sorry. This is three months sorry. So we plant this crop from January. Now we are reaping. I already reaped two times from it and it was very good. All right, well, we're going to help you to reap out the rest of this lot, um, Miss Anne, and then you have to care with no car. Me, you see, also have melon, you know, so I'm going to look for the melon, them we have. All yes, right? we have a few melon leaf over. Good, so I'm going to help you now to take off them here. Yeah, so you're using knife to take off the more mature one. Okay, all right, let me take off the knife. Farm Chicks will be right back. Have you been farming in your backyard? We want to see. Send us videos and pictures to officialfarmchicks at gmail.com. Welcome back to Farm Chicks. So Miss McCallum was not finished with us at all. She showed us Ariel, mm -hmm. but there was more. And even though she started to reap out the majority of this particular crop, mm -hmm. she had to show us exactly what was happening on her farm. We're talking about melons. What a melon. I love melons. I love melons melon too. Especially the melons that Miss McCallum has viewers. So them juicy bad. They were reaping, uh, you know, in the last stage of the reaping process. So we saw what was left there, but she was able to break it down, the process that she's been using to produce her watermelons. So we have a melon right here. Oh, Miss Anne, no, sir, what, what, it come like a report and left, yeah, look at me poor man. and leave, look like me and see you guys were coming. Isn't that nice though? So I had a good crop. Get a good crop? Yes, because okay. I planted two different parts and uh, the farmer was testing the soil, so I found one set up here and I found some down there to see. So, what do you mean by testing, testing the soil? Testing the soil to see where it would cut, bring the melon better. Oh, so you mean, so there's a possibility that you have different soil conditions? Yes, there are different soil conditions. Some parts mm. will moisture more than some parts. Normally, you will be planting your melons with water. Seed, a suckling, how you, how you plant it? A seedling. We a will seedling. Throw it in the tree. Where you get the seedlings from? HL and a farm store in Asburn store. Right, we love H&L because H&L is actually one of our partners and I know for sure that they have, they normally have seedlings, melon, melon, melon seedlings seed, and all yeah, kind of seedlings. Seedlings. So you get it from them and then you just plant it here, so? No, I put it in the tray by compound in the dirt, tray it, and when time it reaches three weeks, sometimes a transplant depends on the stage. After three I weeks? I use water, um, I use calcium in the water in can and 2020 to see how it grow. Okay. And you can get all of those stuff at HNL at Agro. At HNL Agro. That's very good. And more. That's very good. So now, after you transplant this now, it said three weeks elapsed and I just took out my seedling and I plant it in the ground here. So, we have to think about the fact that we plant it at a particular length, too deep, too Like, what are the yeah, things that I should take into them, consideration? I plant them four feet apart, you know. Okay. Just make four step and plant. So, what do you say? Like you just, you just take the four steps, so one, two, three, four, no, and you plant? No, take them a little bit wider sometimes. Okay. We just give them space to run. Okay, okay. Because yeah. melons and pumpkins, they're runners, yeah. naturally. They're vine plants. They're vine plants, so very big, so run. Okay. Mm. So, because I'm looking at now a melon, it looks a little bit young to me. No, it is full, you know. This is a melon small, apple? Yes. Oh. So, and this is a different type of melon? Or because I know you have some melon. Yeah, this big. is a Crimson King. This is just a small one oh. that leaves in the field. We get like 20 pound melons. And do you say the Crips, Crips, Crimson King? Do you say what? Crispy? 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 It's like crispy. ice cream. It's like ice cream. Crispy. Crispy. Can I get one crispy to go, please? One crispy king melon to go. <laughs> Wait, there. Wait, this is the variety of Crimson King. Crimson King. king. Okay, yes. all right, good. That's crispy. And this is very sweet and red. Cause me, really? Cause I'm saying that because it's so small, it's supposed to pack all of that good, sweet juice, niceness. This getting natural sunlight, so it's mm. sweet. You don't put any sweetener on it. Okay. You don't use any fake sunlight. So I, I realize as well, though, Miss Anne, that, um, you know, I can't see the leaves. You know, say it's out in the sun. 
because you can't see the burn marks and stuff. Um, melon have pests and fungus and everything. Yes, they are mostly um, affected by fungicides, so we use systemic fungicide. I don't want to see any drip irrigation lines, and I'm concerned because you know people normally say watermelon is 90% water. Yes. Yeah. So, so how you get the water now if you go to the watermelon? Um, well, I can't afford the drip as yet, so I use the flooding. Okay. I, I flood it, so I come and by in the morning. I pump water from the river and drop the hose in the land. Like a regular pipe hose? No, I run the pipe. There is the hose. Mm -hmm. And I run it and I drop it in the land. And I move it from spot to spot. After I've watered, I've added the fungicide if it's necessary and other insecticides if it's right. necessary. And sometimes melon come in 10 weeks time. So sometimes after the 3 weeks we plant. 10 weeks, after the 3 weeks now we, will, um, we can reap. Six week time mm -hmm. depends. Okay. Depends on the how fast the soil is as well. Nice. I don't really boost it up with fertilizer, so it's mostly 2020 20, I use here. Okay. So that's so that when you when you when you knock it, it sounds a little bit hollow. Hey. Alright, cool. Alright, alright, okay. Don't want to carry it away. Okay, fine. Fun facts about watermelons. So there are actually 1,200 varieties of watermelon and they are considered to be both a fruit and a vegetable. Hmm, that's interesting. I think I'm... they're considered to be a vegetable because they, they grow on a vine. Oh, mm -hmm. I was thinking that too because they're like very similar to pumpkins, uh -huh. squash, that kind of thing. So I think it's from the same family. And as we know, watermelon is loaded by definition, by name, by title, water. 92% of water is in a watermelon. That's a whole lot of water. You can quench your thirst. Water time. Yes, water. And you can just have watermelon juice alone. You don't even need an additional fruit. Just use watermelon alone and you get all of the juice you need in life. Yeah, and then sweet. You leave them out in the sun for a prolonged period, they will get sweet. But careful how long you leave them out in the sun for. Hold on, hold on, hold on, careful. Careful. Woo! Nice um. Oh, it smells so good, Miss Angie. Um, pizza. So this is how we know that the melon is is mature, right? Yeah. And um, the stem. So now I will show you where it's mature, you know. The stem. Yeah. What we're looking for at the stem when we're, when we're finding the mature melon. A dry. Yeah. Um, curly part normally there. So when it is dry, you know that the melon is full. Okay. It has to be dry. Yeah, it has to be fully dry. Right, so it's almost like the stem is, is making way for us to reap it yeah. by being dry. Okay. That is nice. All right. Well, Miss Anne, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. This is very nice. I hope you don't mind. You want this? Let me get this part. You can't eat this part. Maybe you can share the party. That's not bad. That's all right. Why, why are you not cutting a mine? She's not a good cutter at all. I keep telling her. So she don't know if it cut things. Mmm. Them sweet. Oh my God, we had the most amazing time in Sutton's Clarence and it was so good to be back that side even though the journey did far and it reminded me so much of the journeys I took to get to school. <laughs> but it was really good to be there and also to learn so much about Miss McCallum and her farm, 10 acres, amazing stuff. Saril, middle of the year, I go towards summer. Melon, oh my god, Kana comes to by June in a June ending June shop. Can um, she, she gonna do a good job with all the yeah. crops, man? Trust me, I'm big up to her family, her daughter, her son, the entire team. Hey, Tiffany, Tiffany's like, cut action, love her. <laughs> now, listen to me, man. This is the Volkswagen Amarok there, mm -hmm. guys. Y'all don't sleep on that Volkswagen Amarok. Do it, do it. When you talk about strength, when you talk about agility, when you talk about its pickupness, <laughs> you have to understand what pickupness means, guys. Yeah, I don't know if you could have crossed that river, gone through that terrain without using the king of the hill. Full stop. So big up to Volkswagen and the entire team at Volkswagen. Big up to Duane and Sandra, my marketing team at Volkswagen. Hi guys, Steven Hector, the whole Volkswagen team, Duane. Hey Duane. Guys, do not sleep on the Amarok. If you want to test drive it, go over to ATL, call them, tell them the farm chick sent you. We sent you. And until next time, guys, we are the Farm Chicks!
us on Instagram. And thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. What? <laughs> 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 If you're a farmer and would like to be featured on Farm Chicks, send us an email to officialfarmchicks at gmail.com.